Hello and welcome back to Youth Code Jam's Online Bits and Bytes lessons. Today we are continuing with our second activity in the Beetle Blocks unit for Code Adventures. Um, we will be working on how to draw a cube today. So if you watched the first video or were able to come to the first live lesson of this unit, you learned how to draw a two-dimensional or 2D square in this workspace. Um, today we're going to take the next step and figure out how to work with 3D objects. Um, I know this seems really basic and maybe not super exciting, but it's a very different environment than what we've done in the past or worked in in the past, so it's more important that we go a little slower here so that you guys feel comfortable working in it. If you feel comfortable and you want to try to make your own stuff, I definitely encourage it. Um, and you can share it with us on social media by tagging at Youth Code Jam on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, of course, with your parents' permission. Um, but let's go ahead and get started with today's activity. So in a new tab, I'm going to pull up um, beetleblocks.com. And this is the landing page. So you can see that you can either click up here in the main navigation to run beetleblocks or click on this button. Um, you can kind of see that this tool is definitely used for drawing shapes. And the idea, I think, is to be able to print 3D objects if you have the capability we don't, but that's okay. We can still play around with it. Um, if you are interested in this kind of work, check out these other programs or drawings made by other people because there's some pretty fun ones here. That looks like it's supposed to be New York City. Um, there's fireworks. There's a very fancy cube that we are not drawing today, but looks really cool. Somebody made a Monopoly board. Um, so there's lots of cool things that you guys can do once you get a little bit better and more comfortable with this interface. So I'm going to go ahead and run the program. We have our blocks over here, our workspace, the 3D space. You can kind of see on my screen, there's this V axis, which is our 3D space, and then our regular X and Y axis, which is this flat 2D space here. Um, I will try and make this as visible as possible on my screen, but sometimes it's hard to see what's drawn there. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is go to that control drawer and get a when green flag clicked block. So this will start our program. Then get the reset block so that clears our screen of anything that might be on there. And finally, we're going to get this repeat 10 block and change the 10 to a 4. Um, so what we're going to draw here, the first thing we're going to draw is the top of our cube. And then we'll draw the bottom and then we'll draw the sides that connect it or the pillars if that's what you want to call them. Okay, so like I said, we're going to draw that top of the cube first, which is going to be the same as drawing the square we did in activity one. So head on over to the shapes drawer and get this start extruding curves block and place it inside the repeat block. Use the drop down to change curves to lines. And while we're here, go ahead and get this stop extruding block. Then head over to the motion drawer and get this move one block, place it between our start and stop blocks change one to five. So that will draw a line that is five units long. Um, and because we're repeating that four times, it will actually draw the line four times, which gives us a square and will lead to the cube. So with squares and cubes, all the sides are the same length. Finally, we're going to get this rotate B block, place it under the stop block and change 15 to 90. And we're using 90 because squares have 90 degree angles or right angles. So that's why we have that. So if I go ahead and run that, we're going to have a square just like we did in the draw 2D square. So the next thing we're going to do is move up our Z axis so we can draw the, I guess we were actually drawing the top here. All right. So still in the motion drawer, go ahead and get this, um, go to x0, y0, z0 block. And to move up along the x-axis, we're going to change this 0 after the z to a 5. Because again, we want everything to be 5 units long. Okay, So we're going to repeat the code we did up here. And to save some time, we're just going to right-click on that block and choose Duplicate and attach it to our go-to block. So now the only thing we have to change in here is actually, actually we don't have to change anything. Um, we will change this value down here. So we're gonna change that Z value back to a zero. 
so that it puts us back at the bottom once we're done drawing the top. So if I run that now, we have a cube kind of floating up in the air, or a square floating up in the air, a square on the bottom. Our cursor is down here, so we moved it up and drew the sides, and then our beetle or our cursor, whatever, our tool is back down here at zero. And now we need to go about drawing the lines that will connect the top to the bottom. So again, we're gonna have a lot of code repetition, but we're gonna show you some shortcuts to work with it. But let's draw our base one first. Still in the motion drawer, get this rotate Z by 15 block. This time we're gonna change Z to Y and still keep 15, change 15 to 90. Okay. And then we're gonna go to the shapes drawer and get another start extruding block, change curves to lines and then get the stop extruding block and head back to the motion drawer, get that move block and change the one to a five. So all of this, it's very repetitive, but it keeps our square the same size. So now if I run this, we have one, um, one connecting line between our top and bottom cubes. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna have a lot of repeating code so we're gonna do that shortcut again and make this code from go to to stop, we're gonna make repeat that three times. So right click on go to and hit duplicate. And then to make this easy and clear, I'm gonna drag this over into my workspace and duplicate from here and just have these as my basis. So we have three extra over here. I will step-by-step step add them to the main block of code, but this is gonna make it easier for everyone to read, I think. Okay, so take any of these blocks of code. I'm gonna start from the bottom. So I have this block of code here that's nearly identical to this one, or it is identical to this one, and we're gonna make some changes. So the first thing we're gonna do is on the go to block, we're gonna change the zero after the X to a five. And then I want you to use the drop down on the rotate block to change the Y to an X. And that's all we're gonna change and I'll attach it to our main block of code. On our second copied block, I'm going to change the zero after the Y to a five. Yes, sorry, I was checking. And then same thing, I'm gonna change the Y in the rotate block to an X and then attach that to the bottom of our main code. So if I go ahead and pause and run this real quick, you'll see we have one, two, three lines. I just have to draw that last one. So that last one, this empty one up here, we're gonna change the zero after the X to a five and the Y to a five. And one more time, we're gonna change that Y value and rotate to an X. And then attach that to the very bottom of our code. So now if we run this, you can see by kind of moving your screen around here that we have a cube. Um, so that is all we had to do today for the main activity. So you can try changing the color of your cube. There's a drawer called colors that has a lot of cool things that you can uh, test out and see if you can figure out how to draw other three dimensional items. So you could draw a pyramid or a sphere. I'm trying to think of what the 3D names are, but 3D versions of 2D items. See if you can add that dimension to it. Um, and if you are looking to come to a live session, head over to youthcodejam.org. Under Jam at Home Virtual Activities, click on Bits and Bytes Online. And we'll have, so here's the generic information about us, about the Bits and Bytes Club. Here's the current series, so this video is being made a couple weeks in advance. So this was when we were doing Puzzle Club. But this link right here, this register for the live session, it doesn't matter what unit's currently going on, you can take it here and if it's available, um, you'll be able to sign up for the next, at least the next week's activities, um, if not the whole month's activities, depending on your schedule. Um, right now we are open through October. So we have everything up and you can register for all of our lessons through October. Um, and they're free to come to, they're really fun. Everyone kind of gets to show off what they do. Some kids um, will come and kind of make up their own activities or add their own adventure modes. And it's really fun to see. Um, we help each other out. 
it's a it's a fun hour online. It's not like school. Um, it's more relaxed. We're learning, but in a very relaxed environment. So you can see here we had um, tangrams last time we had it. So our most recent lesson will be here with any materials underneath. Not everything will always have materials, and some of our stuff won't even have a video depending on what we do that week. But if there's anything, it will be right here in this space, and then we'll have the rest of the month's activities loaded underneath here after we've held those lessons. So you can see um, some of our SNAP activities are present from earlier in September. We have um, some Puzzle Club stuff down here. And then if you head over to our YouTube channel, you can see all of our videos going back until um, March. Now with these, there's no materials attached to it. So it's just the um, it's just the videos that you can watch and follow along with. You will not have the activity sheets available from here. Um, but that's about it. Quick shout out to our sponsor slash community partner, um, Palo Alto. They are helping us make this possible to bring to more students. And we're really excited to be working with them and to reach more students both in San Antonio and around the country. Um, I hope to see you guys at the live lessons. If that's not possible, I hope you continue to watch these videos and enjoy it.